understanding, facilitation team in COCO has received one formal proposal this evening. Um, are there any other people with formal proposals? All right, so we have one very serious formal proposal on the agenda tonight. Um, before we move into it, uh, I just want to remind everyone um, to treat each other with respect when we're hearing each other talk. I believe it's the most important rule um, about our process. Uh, we will hear all voices, and we will call on uh, new or normally unheard voices uh, before voices that have been speaking a lot. Uh, we will use mic check if there is a call to order, um, and it's not being respected. Um, I'm going to be as stern as I possibly can be, and as fair as I try to be always. Um, I'm going to use my hands and say please before cutting somebody off who is maybe abusing a uh, clarifying question or sp anyone speaking out of turn um, and disrespecting the body. Um, and uh, we will not hesitate to uh, call for a consultation moment with the facilitation team to figure out how to proceed uh, if we're feeling confused. Because um, if we're feeling confused, chances are a lot of you are feeling confused. Uh, so we're going to call for that moment to regroup and ask that um, everyone in the body respect that decision by remaining quiet, calm, and orderly. All right. Um, I think I covered that. So, <coughs> Yeah, and Greg and I uh, might be switching off um, at any point. Uh, Alan has a clarifying question. Could we also utilize temp check uh, and the capacity call for a moment of silence if it's being appropriate? Yes. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, either Nicole, uh, Greg, or myself may intervene. If tensions are high, uh, we will not hesitate to call for just a deep breath uh, so we can clear our minds. All right. Um, so Chris is recounting for the quorum uh, before we move into the formal proposal. Pigeon. <laughs>
After last week's events, we realize that the time has come to draw the line in the sand. We cannot take it anymore, and we will not do so any longer. We stand before you today in a collective block, asking for the immediate expulsion of Chris Dorsey from all Occupy Richmond General Assemblies, meetings, and events held on private property and future occupations. Over the past three and a half months of Occupy Richmond's existence, Dorsey has been at the center of the, of the vast majority of our internal conflicts. Most of us are well aware of his behavior, but to clarify, he has committed each of the following acts repeatedly. Refusal to, me, refusal to adhere, and res, adhere to and respect the process that we've agreed upon by consensus. Attacking Occupy Richmond via Facebook and, uh, and the media with false accusations and intentionally misleading statements. Public and private statements claiming ownership of Occupy Richmond. Threatening and intimidating language both verbal and body language. Instigating confronta confrontations with members of Occupy Richmond. Speaking for the movement via his own, his own press conferences, radio interviews, and print media. Purposefully disrupting and derailing vital work group meetings leading to hours of wasted time. Causing internal conflicts and disputes <coughs> leading to an untold number of people leaving the movement who have yet to return. Harassment through false and unfounded accusations towards members of Occupy Richmond. Manipulation of, of Occupy Richmond members with an intent to divide the orb of body. Disorderly conduct within general assemblies causing distractions and conflicts. While we understand the need for an established process to be implemented, we feel that the past actions committed by Chris Dorsey have warranted no, no further chances. He has been warned countless times about his behavior and has clearly shown refusal to change. He has exploited and abused our general sense of love, inclusion, compassion, acceptance, and forgiveness in order to continue using Orville for his own agendas and disrupting our meetings with malicious intent. Today we are asking you to make an uncomfortable decision but one that we believe will finally bring a close to the single most destructive element within our movement. Please make the right choice and vote in favor of this proposal. How many more people are, really, are we willing to lose for him? All right. <clears throat> so this is a very serious proposal, and it's my understanding that the people standing um, are blocking or willing to leave the movement if this proposal does not or does not pass uh, or as usually blocks um, although used at different times um, we, we, we always address them they have been um, <coughs> signals that show that someone will leave the movement if something passes um, so this is the other way around but I think just as serious we can open up the floor now to hear the blocking concerns from the individuals if they wish to share them. Is there any objection to that? Okay. Um, would any of you like to speak? Um, I'll go ahead. That's okay. Um, I would just like to read through a list that's been compiled um, of Chris Dorsey's attempts, many attempts, to defame Orda that has been tragic to this organization. One, alleging that Orba covered up a sexual assault in Canaro Plaza. This has been so damaging that it has been leaked into the press. There have been people who have been afraid to come to Occupy Richmond General Assemblies due to this insane accusation. We have plenty of evidence to prove to the contrary that that is not the case, yet he keeps going and going and going. I have provided a list of evidence to back all of this up as well, if anybody needs it. Um, two, <coughs> alleging that members of ORVA have engaged in clientel pro operations. Publicly denouncing ORVA and individuals within it. Chris Dorsey has also engaged in threats against Orba by threatening to dismantle our General Assembly, which was witnessed by seven different people. He has also threatened to take Orba to the press several times, which many of us have been witnesses to. Chris Dorsey has defied our points of consensus by repeatedly calling high-ranking police officers to Canal Plaza 
after a police liaison process had been enacted. Two, holding press conferences in Orba's name without approval of the General Assembly. Three, being an administrator of a Facebook page titled Occupy Richmond that portrays idealistic beliefs and administers ideological statements while perpetrating to operate under the veil of Orba without the consensus of the General Assembly and the media working group. He has also repeatedly claimed ownership of Occupy Richmond and he has defied our process by continually disrupting our General Assemblies and meetings. Okay, thank you. Um, so, Kat? Uh, yes, and <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting a bit cold. Uh, just to put this into some perspective, uh, although you are all very intelligent people and I'm, I'm sure you understand, but uh, to make it clear beyond lists, uh, it's, it's either him or us, frankly. Okay, D. Oops. I'm, I'm sorry. Is a clarifying question? Let D go ahead and go. <coughs> D, please. My, my issue primarily is not personal. My issue is about the collective. And any time a person can wield so much power that it would, he single-handedly can usurp the democratic process in general so about with his actions, I'm concerned about. Um, we were talking about the reason why we organize is to stop that from when we talk about the concept of the 99 versus the one. And I see it here. But more pressing to me than that issue is the, the threat of violence in assault. <clears throat> Not only violence well, I have family members that, that's been dying the last week too. So violence is very, very serious to me. And that we say that we offer a safe space for people to talk, to share their ideas, to express who they are. And when folk actually start to feel intimidated to speak, there's a problem. And we need to address it. It's not about Chris as an individual. I don't have a personal relationship with him. But when my comrade, when my friends, when people I care about and trust no longer feel safe, then I don't feel safe and I have to address it. Okay. Um, Alan. For me, I ask that we look at this tonight <clears throat> as an affirmation of who Chris Dorsey has said by his words and his actions he is in relation to Occupy Richmond. My first encounter with him at Kanawha Plaza, he told me, I own Orba, you don't. I took it outside a process at Monroe Park to a majority vote, and you couldn't stop me. He has consistently said loudly, in large groups, in assemblies, you have no control over me. I don't respect you. I don't abide with you, you can't control me. In essence, his actions and his words and his conduct have said to us, I am outside of everything you are, and I ask that your vote tonight affirms what he has been saying to us today. Please, let's affirm him in his choice to not be part of our process, to not respect or participate in this process and disallow him his presence within our midst at general assemblies at <coughs> or or the opportunity to to <coughs> represent himself as part of or represent please let's affirm something which will set us free thank you Daniel has a clarifying question. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just wondering that under this process, um, if he does come to GA, <coughs> what will we do? If he does represent himself in the media, what will we, what will we do? I mean, I think that has to be a part of it. Our yeah. proposal uh, <coughs> doesn't include the enforcement of the way it's enforcing the rule of, of our 
decision. It's only for the decision to be made. I believe it's up to the General Assembly to decide those tactics and those, those ways of doing it. I also think we should, I personally think we should create an affinity group to discuss uh, ways of um, enforcing this decision as well as um, uh, take, uh, dealing with disruptive people in the future and um, insecurity at our events and uh, our meetings. Um, again, that's not up to me. It's not my, that's not what this is about. That's up to the general assembly to decide based upon those decisions. Okay. Um, there's another point of information. In uh, I, yes. Um, I actually have a suggestion. And while it will be completely up to the general assembly to decide what measures to take in the case of someone being disruptive, um, as for the media, I imagine if we contact our media contacts and tell them uh, and, and establish <coughs> a person who can speak for us and, and let them know that if anyone approaches them who is not that one person, then they are not valid. Okay? That may not work. Media, media can, of course, inform that more. Um, I think I have a better suggestion vis-a-vis uh, -vis general assemblies. Um, to my understanding, the only reason that somebody would stay in the general assembly after being asked to leave would be that they'd want to have the last word. Uh, if we could chant, for example, or go to chants, that would prevent them from saying anything and they'd have no reason to stick around. Also, I will yield the floor. I'm sorry. Yeah, we have a couple points of process. I think it's because we're stepping outside of the clarifying <coughs> question. Um, and my point of process is that there is a proposal on which has nothing to do with this. There is an affinity group already been established by this GA to deal with the issues that are being discussed, which aren't part of this proposal. I propose that we go back to this proposal specifically. Okay. What uh, I see you raising your hand in. I was going to ask if we could, before taking clarifying questions, um, to me, it sounded like amendments were being suggested. Before this, this before discussion, could we make sure we've heard all the voices um, from the people who are standing? Um, I know they're not doing this, but we need to remember why they are standing and how serious that is. Um, and then we'll have time for questions. Um, uh, Rain. Um, I'm ready to block, um, and I do it with a heavy heart, because Chris uh, Dorsey has been a supporter of me in many efforts over the years, um, but the disruption, the hours and hours and hours of wasted time for people be doing something, um, the, the, the threats to people I know, and to me personally. I have, I want to be <coughs> all inclusive. Chris has been too damaging to occupy our VA. I don't want him here anymore. If he's here, I'm gone. Okay, Tiffany? I think I, I can piggyback on what Rain is saying. Um, my biggest concern is that, I'll go back to what David started this, this meeting with, the story that he, he had us envision and the reason why we're here. And if we're continuously distracted and divided by the uh, rants of a man who doesn't know how to participate in this organization as a, as a team uh, member, um, then we are distracted from the reason we're here, which is compassion and love and, and making a difference in our community. And when I was asked whether or not I'd be willing to walk away, um, I mean, I, I get a pit of my stomach just thinking about it because this is what I've been waiting for mm -hmm. for 37 years. Mm -hmm. And to think that I would have to walk away from it because we're not strong enough as, as a group to care enough about ourselves to do the right thing um, really makes me sad, but I'd go. Okay. Um, Jonathan, please. I do not often talk as to why I'm here. I am a straight white male in my 20s. I have a job. I don't, I'm not personally a threat from any of the immediate sense of any of the issues. However, because of the Occupy movement, 
because I believe very strongly <coughs> in the idea of moral forces of good versus bad or whatever you want to call it. I have dropped out of college. I don't mean I didn't go to college this semester. I mean I dropped out at the end of last semester because the Senate put the NDAA through and I study history and I know what happens next. <laughs> <coughs> I have invested very, very, very much in Occupy Richmond. And we are not here <coughs> to sit in meetings and listen to people complain about very minor, trivial, personal issues. We are here for the greater good of the entire planet. And I really mean that in every grandiose hyperbolic sense. <laughs> and every second that we waste in our very sparse meetings, because as I recall, <coughs> the police kind of don't like having us outdoors, <laughs> is the work that we are not doing for the rest of the world. <coughs> and that is absolutely unconscionable. And I cannot stand for it. Anyone else wish to speak? David, please. You know, I'll just say briefly that I've tried to work and talk with Chris and give him the benefit of the doubt on several occasions. But quite honestly, he's taking up too much time. I don't have a lot of time. I've got to schedule and fit my time around what I can do and what I can't do. And I have time for somebody to tell me what they did. And to hear them talk about what they did and how they've been dis, dis, disenfranchised and how they've been heard by the screw and all this stuff. I have time for it. I'm sorry. We're all here to work together and we need to grow up. <coughs> if somebody's going to be that way, they need to grow up and realize that it's not about them. It's not about me. And everybody here has worked very hard. And I hate to see the work you guys have done. You're all very smart. You're very compassionate. You're, you're uncommonly a, a synergistic group. And I think it's fantastic. We need to preserve that. But with one person monopolizing, even, even having a meeting for this one person, okay, is a problem for me. For one person to take that much energy and that much of what we're about, I, I don't have time for it. And I know that many people don't. I have other avenues that I will work in because I believe in what we're, we, we have started here. And Richmond is one of the stronger groups, actually. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud of what we've done so far. And I don't want to see that day real by one person, by one group of people, or by a bunch of followers of that person. Okay? I cannot, I don't have any more energy for it. And I know that I personally have missed a few GAs because I felt like he was going to be here. And I did not want that to affect my decisions and my actions about how I'm going to participate. So I'm standing here saying, if, if we don't, we have to have some mechanism. We all know that this guy is a problem. We have to have some mechanism of excluding people. I'm sorry. Because they need help, but whatever. We're about this mission and this goal. That's what we're about. We're about this vision. And we need to keep on it. So if one person's going to behave like, like I've seen him behave like the savior of the, or whatever, the center of the group, okay? <coughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, does anyone else want to speak? <coughs> All right. Um, at this time, uh, we have the opportunity to uh, post clarifying questions. Um, clarifying questions should attempt to clarify specific details of the language or ideas in the proposal, uh, the specifics uh, for, un for better understanding the proposal as is. After clarifying questions, there will be the opportunity to open up stack to hear all voices and opinions on the formal proposal. Um, I'd like to ask that we keep clarifying questions with their response to around two minutes. Um, the clarifying question once posed will go back to the presenter. Um, although it's, there's lots of sponsors of this proposal standing here before you, 
assume that if there's other points of information, um, they could be heard. Um, so at this time, would anyone with a clarifying question please raise their hand and staff is going to take a vote. Whitney, Teddy, Vivette. Before me, but uh, so I'm saying maybe you should be. I could forward. care less where I am in yeah. order as long as I get a chance. Okay. Ladies first, sure. With, uh, with Josh, Josh. A point of information. Progressive stack has nothing to do with how soon someone raises their hand. It has all to do with marginalized voices. Uh, thank you. Josh is correct in that. Um, so after seeing the hands raised, stackers, you'd like to create the order of the stack sure. and please announce it. Uh, are those all the people wishing to post clarifying questions? We have um, basically a stack of four clarifying questions. Four. Okay. So do you want to um, to Bobby, could you just repeat the second thing that you had on your list? Because I didn't hear it. That's all. That's my only clarifying question. Um, that would be alleging that members of Orba have engaged in Cointel Pro operations publicly. Announcing that we are CIA operatives. Uh, okay. Next to the question. I would like to know why and how out of all of you all that have done some of the very same things. In the name of my father, I serve, but yet you can crucify him. You running around with the camera up in his face all through the canal closet. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to know how is it out of all of these people that I've watched, I'm not saying Chris is a saint, by no means am I saying that. I've done my best that I could working with Chris. Teddy, my, okay. please, I see a lot how, of things in process right how, now. How, how is he the only one that's getting put out when so many of you are guilty? Because the list is long and damaging. That you created? That I created and there's evidence to uh, back it up. Uh, uh, I All see right. more things in process. Um, I was just side the side conversation. Um, Thank you. I heard Josh. Oh, yes. Yeah, it did she come to a question, and she, and she and answered it. Um, please, before answering a question, do one of these. Um, did that answer your question, Teddy? No, it didn't answer it because he's the only one. Nobody in the G8. I mean, they voted on me. Teddy, would you rest your would you restate My question? question is, how in the name of the God I serve, but I've seen these things happen in front of my eyes, that nobody was written up, nobody was asked to leave. How can you sit here? <clears throat> Teddy, if I've heard your question correctly, it is, how is this uh -huh, coming, Chris? Uh -huh. yes. How is he the only one? How is, the, how is it that Chris Dorsey is the only one mm -hmm. in relation to this proposal? Um, I see three points of information. Are there any objections to hearing them all? No, I don't have a problem because okay. I'm about the truth. Lay it on me. Um, Tiffany, please, then Rain, and then Will. My, my answer to your question is, at this point, this is who we're bringing forth to the GA. If there's anybody else that you feel should be brought forward to the GA to be expelled because of their behavior, then perhaps you should do so. Right on. Um, Rain or Will, would you still like to speak to it? Um, <coughs> Tiffany more or less answered it, but um, I haven't been felt threatened by anyone else here at Occupy Richmond. Um, and 
I would move forward to, to ex excluding, banning, whatever, anyone else that, that um, had the sort of behavior that Chris has. Um, absolutely, and I, I'm with that. All right. Um, Will? I just want to say that, that I think the amount of things that we're alleging and uh, making uh, that we're accusing him of uh, speaks for itself. No other member of, of Occupy has done the things that he's th this many things in the, in the manner that he has done them. Um, I, I know I'm sure every single one of us has done something out of line at one point. That is not the, what we're damning him. It's because of the multiple things in the unapologetical and unapologetic, un unapologetic way that he's talking <coughs> about these things. Um, but that's, I think, like I said, I think the, uh, the, the amount of things speak for this. this um, there's also a point of information from Alan. Are there any objections to hearing that? All right, Alan, please. For me, it comes to the fierceness with which he claims his right and it is a right to stand outside of our process, to act as an individual while claiming to be part of a collective. It can't be both. It can't be both. And that's my whole statement earlier. That's the, that's, that's the reason, Tim. OK, um, next in stack with clarifying questions, Vivek. I see this really as a conflict in how open we are as a group. And some of the I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm working my way through it. And also the 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 respect that we have for the relationships as Graham beautifully put it at the free speech forum um, on Friday, sort of um, the importance of our assembly and of course as Jonathan and others have reminded us today, David, uh, regarding the work that need, needs to be done. I would like to rehear the uh, proposal myself, but also I would like to ask whether there is any language that's going to be included um, for potential transition, like transitory or intermediate steps. Okay. Um, I see a couple points of process in the room. I believe it's because people are feeling that wasn't a clarifying question. Um, could, I can address it, but it doesn't. You, it seemed as though you had two questions. Could you restate them clearly, please? As a point of clarification. to do a suspension first. And my second question 
is, is this really the precedent that we want mm -hmm. as GA? And I'm going to uh, specify that is not a question uh, to, the jet, to the people in, in person of the precedent, but the entire GA is that the precedent. That is a question. No, Do we want a clarifying question? See, okay. Point taken. So the first, so the first question was the one that we want. Why did we go with uh, the <coughs> suspension motion first? Okay. So, right. um, you probably had a point of information. Simply put, because we have had three months of warning him and asking him to please stop this, and he had not. There are people who. Are who do not want him coming back, period. And the, we, it's hard for me to answer for the entire group because I have my own personal feelings on this. But um, I also, yeah, to be honest with you, I just do not think the suspension is what is deserved at this moment. I think we, there are people here do, that do not want to be part of this. This is a very serious thing to be honest. Um, we have tried once before. We've had a GA consent for his removal before. This is recorded. It has happened. And that GA consensus was ignored. So basically, we don't even shouldn't even have to be doing this because the GA has already agreed to be gone. That was for one night. night. It, um, no. No. That was not last. This is back in Canada. So this is something that has that we have ignored our consensus point already, and we have over, we have ignored our own decision and let him back in the organization. Mm -hmm. and that's not. All right. Um, there there were two other points of information. Are there any objections to hearing those? Because uh, we are at the <coughs> two minute marker. Uh, but no objections to hearing these two points of information to this question. Okay, Bobby and then. I'm going to address. Okay, so one more. Just uh, piggybacking off of William, actually, uh, Dorsey was, uh, I guess you can say, uh, expelled from Orba previously in Kanawha. Uh, unfortunately, a, a lot of people allowed him back in without adhering to our already
Um, so this sort of goes back to uh, his ostracization at Kanawha Plaza. Um, because it was an emergency GA, we didn't necessarily have a process in place to where an emergency GA would have any legitimacy. So my question would then be if in the language of your proposal it says the immediate expulsion or exclusion of Chris Dorsey, that's like an active verb, that means that we would have to enforce something so I guess what I'm wondering is, are you asking that we simply say as a GA that we don't want Chris Dorsey around and that he's not one of us? Or are you asking for us to actively keep someone out of our space? Because I feel like they're distinct and I feel like that, that could get bogged down in the future when we go to interpret it. And if we're going to do this because it's so important, we need to do it right. Um, there's also Kat and Bobby with points of the <coughs> 
if I understand what you're saying correctly, um, I think I think the word expulsion can be interpreted in both ways. But how I I originally say it and how you're saying it, because um, you're right, it is an active verb. Um, but I, I honestly I, I don't know how else to state it in a way that would be effective to what. We have a group of want that I mean I don't know. Is so, can someone else cat probably that better than that? I mean uh, I think <coughs> the the first implies the second. We're not going to vote that we don't want Chris Dorsey around and then just be really quiet at him when he comes in and, and tries to participate again. Uh, I believe the context of our proposal is to to vote and and affirm that we're not Oh, or, or to vote as a body that we don't want him here. The actual means of keeping him away, uh, I believe there's already an affinity group, the, the means by which haven't been engineered, but they are implied. Can I please have the question? Uh, are there any objections to Chris stepping down momentarily? Yeah, just to ask a question. To ask a question? There is consent to that. Um, uh, <laughs> um, don't, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm confused on how to proceed. Um, there's a point of process, but I'm just going to consult with the um, facilitation team. I, as much as I want to hear it, if, if you step down on the step right back up again, what's the point of stepping down? It's process? against procedure. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's either you step down and you stay down, or you, or you stay up and stay down. Yeah, I'm going to have to explain um, point of process. That's, what, that's how I understand it. Um, yeah. I would love to have a say. There's another point, please. Um, there's another point of process and a point of information probably on that subject. I'd like to not have this turn into a huge conversation if the facilitation team can take a minute to talk. Okay. <laughs>